Hello, I'm Stephen Coates and welcome to my studio here in Sheffield. As many of you know, I have posted quite a few videos on YouTube and most of these are quite long with lots of information about the whole painting process. Most people want to sit down and create a whole painting but often forget that practicing and doodling can have a dramatic effect on skill level. So I wanted to show you a few exciting exercises you can do with watercolour paint that only take a few minutes. So I hope you will enjoy having a go at some of my quick fire doodling sessions. Right, hello. Today's doodle is going to be a little snow scene. Uh, I've got a piece of uh, Bockingford 140 pound watercolour paper here. This is the knot with the texture. Uh, and it's about 26 by 19. So it's quite a small study, but ideal for a doodle. All I've done so far is just drawn this horizon line across here with the pencil. So we're going to do a sky with some trees in it and then have some snow with a fence and some shadows. So let's have a quick look at the palette. Uh, today I'm going to be using some burnt sienna and some burnt umber. I've put some ultramarine here and I've also got a blob of cerulean blue. So the idea is just to, I'm going to put a, a sky on using the cerulean and then I'm going to immediately, while it's wet, put some trees in. So I'm just going to put a little bit of water in the burnt sienna. Not too much, because I want that to be really quite strong. I'm going to do the same with the burnt umber. But I'm just going to add a little bit of ultramarine to the burnt umber, which actually sort of turns it from a, a milk chocolate colour into more of a dark chocolate colour. It darkens it significantly. Actually, if you keep adding the ultramarine, it will eventually go grey. But that gives us a really deep, dark chocolate colour, which is perfect for what I'm wanting to do today. What I want to show you today is how we can create uh, a, a really lovely, sunny, crisp sky on a snowy day. Uh, I want to put some trees in the background, which I'm going to make them blurred. They're going to be misty and blurred and look as if they're distant which is why the paint on the palette is quite strong. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to do this without using masking tape or masking fluid along this horizon. So I've got some clean water here and I've got one of my mini hake brushes. And I'm quite literally going to soak the paper uh, to within about uh, a centimetre of that drawn line. So I'm just leaving a little part of it above which is dry and you'll see why shortly. I'm just a tiny bit more water at the top. So I'm not going to put any clouds in the sky. I'm going to have this as a really solid blue sky. Pick up the cerulean by swizzling the brush from side to side, picking up plenty of that. I'm going to start right at the top and we'll put a band of the cerulean in there. And then as I come down, we should get a natural fade towards that horizon and that'll do absolutely fine for the sky. Any brush marks that appear in there will uh, smooth out as the water continues to move. Now I'm going to use one of my large foliator brushes. This is um, uh, a brush that's designed specifically for painting tree foliage. Obviously this um, cerulean sky now has smoothed out and it's settling off so I'm literally I've just dampened the brush and I'm gonna put that into the burnt sienna and push it down and stir it to try and fill the brush head up with paint and then I'm gonna have a couple of feature trees towards the right hand side I want a, I want a large one in here I'm just gonna make a start with that so each of these brush strokes is like a little prod. Go right up here with that. I'm going to add some burnt umber to that shortly. And then we'll have a smaller, a smaller one here. Compositionally that will work really well. And then I'm going to pull that all the way across there, leaving it short of the horizon. So this is like a little sort of hedgerow of trees in the background. 
can see the paper bouncing a bit there as I put the foliage in. And already you can see that that's starting to soften uh, in the cerulean above. Uh, let's just put a little bit more of the burnt sienna in here and there. Just strengthens it. And then I'm going to move directly to the burnt umber now. This is the mix, the dark chocolate mix. I'm going to start dropping in a little bit of that here and there. And you can see that is much, much stronger. And as this cerulean sky starts to dry, it's still damp. As it starts to dry, these brush strokes become that little bit more rigid, a little bit more prominent. Just keep prodding that in there. Now when we get down to the towards the snow line, I want to start increasing the intensity of this. There's less light down there and you will often find that the very bottom edge of these hedgerows and trees becomes very dark. Now I've just flipped the brush upside down so I can get a little bit closer to the snow line and in a second I'm just going to switch to my number eight brush and this is where I now I think that looks pretty good just pop a little bit more up there you can see how that's texturizing the sort of leaf effect of the trees and I'm literally going to go straight to my number eight pick up some of that dark chocolate burnt umber and I'm going to sweep it now across there, just pulling that lower area of wet paint along and pulling it down onto that snow line to give me a lovely soft curvy but sharp edge. And you know, a lot of people will probably use masking tape, masking fluid there to try and get that edge but this really shows that you can do it and it's not, uh, not necessary. So the one thing that can happen is that you can end up with a dark line across the bottom. So it's just a case of making sure that that paint is, use the paint to create the edge, but kind of flick it up into the rest of the trees to avoid getting a, a line across. Now, one other little trick, I'm going to get a rigger. And again, while this is still damp, this is just such a great exercise to do. I'm going to put a number two rigger and fill it up with the dark chocolate grey and I'm going to just put in a few tree trunks. We'll put two on that one there. In fact, I might even put a third one in there. And they will blur. They will blur just the same as the foliage has into the sky. So that's all done in, uh, in one go. Okay, that's um, been dried off with the hair dry now. It's completely dry and as you can see, I've just drawn on a few fence posts which sort of get slightly closer to each other and get shorter as we go into the distance there. What I'm going to do now is just put a little bit of colour on this snow because snow is never white. It will always reflect uh, the sort of ambient light from above. But also I want to make this look like there's a bit of light coming from just behind the trees to the left. I'm just going to pull a few sh soft shadows down into the snow from the trees. Uh, so while this area of snow is wet, I'm going to put the shadows of the trees in and I'm also going to put a little soft shadow on each of the fence posts. So again, I'm going to use the mini hake. Let's just get some nice clean water. I'm gonna wet the whole area of the snow, trying to get that as close as I can to the top. To be honest, if you just catch the paint a little bit, it's not really an issue. But again, I want to get a nice even film of water all the way across that whole area. It's just, uh, maybe just there, it's just caught that burnt umber there just a little bit, which is not a problem because I'm going to pull a little bit of that paint through. 
Okay, so that's a nice level, even film of water. Uh, I want to just get a little bit of the cerulean into there because a little bit of the light from the sky will be reflecting off the snow crystals in the in the snow. So just a little bit on the brush. I'm using my number eight round brush. I'll just very gently ease a little bit of that paint through the area of snow. And as you can see, it just colors it slightly and it's lovely and soft. Now I'm just gonna to touch the brush into the that dark chocolate burnt umber mix. And I'm literally going to just try and pull a little bit of that paint from there down like this into the snow, nice and gently. Just to make it look as though the trees are creating a, a little shadow. Maybe that just wants to be a touch stronger there. Like that. All has to happen quickly while there's water in that paint in the snow. A little bit more intensity there. So I've just picked up a little bit of the slightly stronger burnt umber and that looks really excellent there now. So all I need to do now really is just put a little shadow on the fence post. So I've just used the tip of my number eight. This is one of my spearheads, number eight. And just a little touch down and a little flick on the bottom of the fence post like that. Just pull over again just to smooth those off. Like that. Yeah, that's lovely. So I'm going to dry that off now and then we'll put the fence posts in and that will be a finished painting. So we'll just get this finished off now. So I'm just going to use the my number six spearhead brush. It's got a nice sharp point this. Remember all these products are available on my website. Uh, and I'm just going to put some paint onto these fence posts. Do them quite dark so that they really stand out. Don't particularly want to get them too precise. And just have those disappearing over there. Uh, what about one or two horizontals? So I'm going to just use the rigger for this. I'm going to try and make these sort of quite uneven. Flick the rigger across. Make it look a little bit rickety. Have them all sort of coming across at different angles. Looks a little bit clumsy, but actually looks really effective in a painting. Disappearing into the background. And um, I actually had a few splashes here earlier on with when I was using the foliator brush. So it gives me a perfect opportunity just to put maybe a few birds in there as well. Put one over there. So there it is, that's my finished painting. I've just dried that off, erased any pencil marks that were showing. And I'm sure you'll agree that makes a fabulous little study. So I hope you have fun having a go at that. Um, please do subscribe and uh, I'll see you on another video soon. Thank you very much for watching.